What is up guys, this is Max Square, and in this video we're taking a look at a really cool app for managing PDFs. Now, I know that might not sound super exciting, but this can actually be a really useful tool in your workflow, even as a student, just going through PowerPoints from teachers and professors, it can be really helpful to have. But just before we jump into it, I wanna thank our sponsor, Wondershare, for sponsoring this video and giving me a free copy of this app to review. They are actually giving away a couple of additional licenses, which I'll talk about at the end of this video. So if you wanna get a free copy of this app, definitely stick around for that. I do wanna say that just because this is sponsored does not mean I can't give my full and honest opinion about this app. I really do think this is a really useful tool and I want to show you exactly what it can do. So let's jump into it. So this app is called PDF Element and when you open it up, it looks something like this. Now there are actually two different versions, PDF Element Pro and then just regular PDF Element and I'll talk about the differences between the two later on. But one thing I like here is that there's actually kind of a home screen for the app. Some apps like Preview, you just open up your PDF and you're stuck in that window. But here you can kind of browse your recent documents over here, but you can also edit and open different things here. Another cool thing about the layout is as you open up multiple documents, you'll see we just have some tabs at the top. This is really easy to just jump between your different projects and you can still go back to the homepage. Those tabs are still there. And one last thing about the layout is that you can switch into a page view where you can see a bunch of thumbnails and just a grid view layout. This is really cool to have, especially when you have tons and tons of slides like this one. I think there's over 30 slides. But what's also cool is you can still see all the titles and some of the text. So if you're just trying to quickly navigate through some of your pages, it's a lot easier to do so like this. Probably the main reason people use PDF editors like this is just to add their own comments, highlight different text. So I'm gonna spend quite a lot of time on this part of the app. There are quite a few features that I'm gonna get to, but let's take a look at some things you can do inside a PDF element. So there's a couple different modes we have. We have the hand view, which is pretty much just like your pointer. You can scroll through, you can drag around the page. And then we have our select tool. So this is gonna be used to select different parts of the text and highlight it. You can strike through different parts if you need to. So for example, if I wanted to highlight the business ethics part of this slide, I could select my highlight tool, highlight business, business, biz, highlight business ethics and then it's just pretty much highlighted. You can change the color. So if you wanted that to stand out a little bit more and you can pull up your custom color picker. So if you had a specific color in mind, you can do that. If you wanna add a comment to that, you can just double click, add in whatever you want. So really love this title, great job. And then if you wanted, you can move that window around. So if you wanted to be a little bit out of the way or not covering up any of the actual content, you can put it there. You can also add text boxes and shapes, kind of your default annotation tools. But another thing is that you can add a signature. This is probably most useful for legal documents and agreements. So I've actually pulled up just a template for a room rental agreement. And let's say we needed to add our signature down here at the bottom. What we could do is pull up our select tools one more time, go to more and then select signature. Then a new sidebar opens up and there's actually a couple ways you can add this in. You can just type in some text. So if I said my name was Max Square, then we could hit done and that could be your signature. But another way you could do it is actually to write this on a piece of paper. That's probably the most common way to do it. And then you hold it up to the camera and scan it in. Now, if we head over into the edit tab, we can actually use a couple more tools like adding text again, but here we can also add images and links. So one thing you can do with these links is to link to different parts of the document. So if you have maybe a table of contents at the beginning, maybe something like an instruction manual, whatever the case may be, you could actually highlight that part of the text and then link to a different page. So for example, if we had chapter objectives and we wanted one to link to a specific slide, what we could do is highlight the one point and select add. And then all we have to do is go to the page we want and select set link. Now I've gone ahead and saved this and opened it up inside a preview so you can actually test this when you're not in edit mode. And we can actually see this border box around one. And if I click on that, it'll actually jump to the next slide. Now, of course you can link to any page, but you can also link to a specific web page or even have it open up a file if you wanted to do that. Now you may notice the option next to it called OCR. Now this stands for optical character recognition. And basically what that means is that if you take an actual physical document and you scan it in, whether that be on an actual scanner or with your phone, when it comes in, obviously it's coming in as an image 
and there isn't actual editable or searchable text. So this feature essentially tries to scan through the image and assign the text to real letters so that you can search it and then convert it to other formats. Now the app also works really well with interactive elements. So I've opened up a PDF that has an interactive form and you can see it's gone ahead and highlighted those parts of the form. So when I'm putting in my name, I can literally just select and type in my name as if I were on a web page or an actual form. So that works really well, it's easy to use. Now, if you are trying to make a regular PDF an interactive form, you can go to the form tab and then you can add tools like a text field. So if I were to add something above the address, I could just click there and then I can mess around with how big that is, adjust it to the actual size of that bar so that when someone opens it up again, they can interact with it as if it were interactive the whole time. Now, one feature the app does include is the ability to edit actual text and replace it with your own version. But when I actually tried to test this, what I realized is it's really just adding a layer over a more transparent layer. So for example, if I wanted to change this title to something like business ethics, you'll see that it does add my title, but the why study ethics title is still there. It's just kind of a light gray and it's hard to read. And a couple things to note here though, is that when I selected that text and started typing, it actually brought in all the same fonts and size that that other title was using. So I didn't have to change anything to match the rest of the document. Another thing is that while it doesn't look great on this background, I did find that when I replaced it on a solid white background, which most documents are out there, it works really well. So for example, if I wanted to replace rental with legal, I could type that out and you see it works seamlessly. You can't even tell that it was another title previously. Another cool thing you can do is watermark your slide. So you can add one here and you can do this with text. You can add an image or another PDF. So if you wanted to use text, I could say something like property of max square. You can change the font. You can scale that up, whatever you want to do. But if you have a logo you want to add, you can go and pull that in there. One downside about this is you can't actually scale down the images. And this is frustrating because my logos are pretty high quality. They're pretty much vector format. And so I bring it in and you can't really see most of it, but at least the cue is, is there, I guess. Now you can also convert in and out of PDFs really quickly in tons of different formats with this app. So if we go to the convert tab, we can go to formats like Word, Excel, PowerPoint, images. We can convert to text or pages, even HTML. And that works vice versa. So if you have an HTML file or pages, PowerPoint, something like that, you can actually open it up into PDF element and then convert it to a PDF from there. Now, one thing I use PDF managers a lot for is to compress files down. I use a lot of images just because that is in the nature of my work. And so I have a PDF here that is just around a hundred megs and I wanna try and bring this down to something more usable. So what you can actually do is go to file save as other, and then select optimize PDF. And we have tons of different options to bring this down. So if we just went with the lowest quality, this would end up around 1.1 megs. But if we preview that, we can open this up without actually exporting it. You can see the images are pretty low quality. It's not super nice to show, especially because it's mostly images. So I might choose something around 300 DPI. Obviously this will take a little bit longer to compress. This is around eight megs, and if we preview that, the images are a lot better than when we started. So we can just go ahead and save that, and literally we've reduced it by 90%. Now I did mention OCR, which makes searching through documents pretty easy, and while this is just a PowerPoint, it doesn't need that feature, I did find that PDF Element makes searching a lot easier than most apps. So if I just hit Command F, pull up our search dialog, we can search for something like ethics. So anytime ethics is mentioned, we can just hit enter, and browse through the document. Now we also have the option to replace the text using that edit tool. So if I jump into another document here, I could search for rental and anytime rental is mentioned, I could go to replace with and enter in legal and hit replace and you see it updates. Now, the last part of the app, I'm gonna go through a little bit quickly, but it is really important and that is the protection and security features. So you have the option to actually redact certain parts of the file. So maybe if you wanted to redact whatever was on the address, all you have to do is just create a little box above where you wanted to highlight it. And then when you're done, just say apply redactions and then it'll make that part of the document solid black or whatever color you choose. Another thing is that you can add a password to the entire PDF. So if you wanna encrypt with that, you can select require a password to open the document. And you can also restrict editing certain parts of the document, which is pretty cool. 
And again, you could set that with a password. So how much do these apps cost? Well, PDF Element will cost you 60 bucks and then PDF Element Pro, which is the version I was using and it comes with the additional features like OCR, will cost you 100 bucks. Now, you might be asking, why would I even spend money on a PDF manager when I have something like Preview well, if you're comparing this to something like Adobe Acrobat, which you usually spend $15 a month, in a year's time, you're gonna pay that off and an additional license, even for something like the pro version of PDF Element. And you're getting just as many, if not more features. So I think this is an awesome app and it will really help a lot of people who work with PDFs every day, every week. Plus, Wondershare is allowing me to give five licenses away for free. So I'm gonna drop those down in the description. It's just gonna be on a first come first serve. So whoever uses those licenses first will get the app for free. But anyway guys, that has been it for this video and review. I hope you all enjoyed. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.